Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 61 of the year 2022 ratifying the cooperation agreement for the exchange and protection of personal data and information for security purposes between the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 62 of the year 2022 appointing Ghada Hamid Habib Ahmed Hassan Ombudsman at the Ministry of Interior with the rank of Under Secretary. His Majesty the King also issued Loyal Law and Decree 41 of the year 2022 amending some provisions of the Real Estate Sector Regulation Law promulgated by Law 27 of the year 2017. The Royal Court announces that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will lead well-wishers in welcoming His Holiness Pope Francis upon his arrival in the Kingdom tomorrow on a historic four-day official visit. His Holiness Pope Francis will participate in the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West for Human Coexistence, to be held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The Sheikh of Al-Azhar Al-Sharif and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, His Eminence, Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayyib, will also arrive in Bahrain tomorrow at the invitation of His Majesty the King to participate in the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West for Human Coexistence, to be held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The real royal court takes this occasion to welcome Bahrain's illustrious guests and their accompanying delegation, wishing them a fulfilling visit in Bahrain. The court praises His Holiness and His Eminence's commitment to promoting a culture of dialogue, coexistence, tolerance and support for human fraternity. Community leaders of various faiths in Bahrain have commended His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his unwavering support towards building bridges between communities. President of the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities, Ibrahim Dawood Nunu, highlighted that the main aim of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence is to promote empathy within the Bahrain society towards other religions. Main contributions uh, are the um, the main targets or the main aims of the King Hamad Global Center is to promote Bahrain's example to the outside world, to bring in new ideas for coexistence within Bahrain, and to make sure we promote empathy within the Bahraini society. So for me, empathy is the key to uh, building the King Hamad Global Center um, sphere of influence on uh, Bahrain and the outside world, especially as we see the requirement for empathy in the schools and in all walks of life in society. His Holiness Pope Francis will arrive in the Kingdom of Bahrain, of Bahrain on the 3rd of November and Hindu community leader Shastri Vijay Kumar Mukia stressed that His Holiness visit will be a milestone for Bahrain and its Christian community as well as followers of other faiths. He also praised His Majesty the King for making the papal visit possible. Dignitaries or I say holy figure, super most authority of the Christian community visiting Bahrain, I would like to say that such saints as Pope who is visiting Bahrain, Bahrain will be blessed by his arrival and along with that when His Holiness Pope comes here, the all other religions also will definitely be benefited by his blessings. Because such personalities to see is not possible very easily. But Kingdom of Bahrain is such a place where everything can be possible under the wise leadership of King Hamad. Pop's visit, we are very happy that he will be here and our land will be blessed by his presence. 
Professor Alessandro Sagioro, who is in charge of the King Hamad Chair for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Italy, reflected on the positive outcomes from previous interfaith dialogues. He stressed that the visit of uh, His Holiness Pope Francis will help Bahrain as well as other countries to follow the model laid out by His Majesty the King that a peaceful approach to religions is key to a sustainable lifestyle. The King Ahmad Global uh, Center uh, is, a, is a center that uh, is working globally and therefore I had the first meeting uh, uh, a few years ago and I'm very glad to testify that uh, their activities uh, in uh, uh, developing projects, uh, in uh, helping students, uh, in uh, also uh, doing memorandum of understanding with very relevant institutions uh, at the global level uh, are helping a lot uh, uh, the idea to develop uh, uh, a deep understanding of uh, religions around the world. Religions need to be understood from the point of view of the peaceful coexistence and we follow here, here uh, the uh, declaration of uh, King Hamad and uh, declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain, in which uh, many points are stressed. This is a kind of program that can help and is actually helping many students developing their knowledge and uh, uh, also, uh, it helps uh, building networks of peace uh, around the world. Uh, students are the future of society and the King Ahmad Global Center is helping in this uh, task, uh, both universities, uh, institutions, uh, uh, nations uh, and governments uh, uh, giving advice uh, and also uh, uh, opening uh, the uh, way to a message of understanding, uh, respect uh, and uh, positive interaction between new generations. Um, it's very important that this center uh, starts its activity from uh, Bahrain uh, because there we can uh, uh, testify that there is uh, a uh, very relevant religious freedom, a culture of religious freedom, religious freedom, I would say better, uh, that uh, uh, roots in the uh, centuries ago and uh, has a very long tradition and a very open uh, uh, process of transformation positively uh, towards the future. The Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration was launched on September 14, 2017. This document expresses the thought and philosophy of His Majesty the King on the concept of human coexistence. This declaration is based on a number of principles that are the pillars of peaceful human coexistence as an approach to peace in the world.
His Holiness Pope Francis will arrive in Bahrain tomorrow on an official visit at the invitation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The papal visit to the kingdom will run until Sunday. Administrator of the Apostolic Viceriat of Northern Arabia, Bishop Paul Hinder, affirmed that the historic visit of Pope Francis to Bahrain confirms his interest in the Arabian Gulf region. In a statement to the Vatican News newspaper, the bishop considered the Pope's apostolic journey as a visit to the church in the entire Gulf region. Bishop Hinder affirmed the government of Bahrain stands in constantly maintaining a good relationship with various churches and Christians. He also said that the 39th apostolic journey abroad by Pope Francis is the second to the region following his visit to the United Arab Emirates in 2018 to support interfaith dialogue. Outlining the two main purposes of the papal visit to Bahrain, Bishop Hinder said the first is to maintain and to deepen the interfaith dialogue with Muslims, while the second would be to give encouragement to the flock of Catholics and the Christians in general. Prominent Christian figures in Bahrain said that the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue being held under the patronage of His Majesty the King embodies Bahrain's strong commitment to the dissemination of a culture of peace, coexistence and compassion. In statements to Bahrain's news agency, they pointed out that the forum comes to promote dialogue among civilizations, cultures and religions. National Evangelic Church pastor Reverend Hania Aziz said that the title and content of this forum is a genius, comprehensive and inclusive of choice of the concept of peace and coexistence. The Reverend said that the form came at a time when the world is in dire need of peaceful dialogue and new channels to solve regional and global problems. He stressed that the conference puts Bahrain in its deserved place for the peacemaking and supportive countries of coexistence under the leadership of His Majesty the King. Alice Thomas uh, Saman said that the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue will produce a global outcome, especially since His Majesty the King always focused on the call to establish the values of coexistence and religious tolerance. She also stressed that the presence of the Pope and Sheikh Al Azhar will give the Forum exceptional importance and will shed light on the Kingdom's moves in this aspect, especially since Bahrain has become a global model in embracing religious diversity and peaceful coexistence among the spectrum of society. For her part, Shura Council member Hala Ramzi Fayez said that the form embodies the kingdom's approach in calling for the dissemination of a culture of peace. She stressed that the kingdom's hosting of this form is a clear proof of the wise leadership's absolute belief in the importance of dialogue and close cooperation and establishing coexistence and peace. She added that Bahrain has represented a successful Arab model in coexistence and dialogue among cultures for thousands of years. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa from Bahrain stands towards current regional and international affairs and the importance of joint Arab coordination and cooperation, especially in light of the agreements and treaties within the framework of the Arab League and unity to face challenges and crises facing the Arab work and foreign interferences in its internal affairs. This came during His Majesty's speech at the closing session of the 31st Arab Summit, which was delivered by His Majesty the King's special representative, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. فخامة الرئيس عبد المجيد تبون رئيس الجمهورية الجزائرية الديمقراطية الشعبية الشقيقة أصحاب الجلالة والخامة والسمو معالي أحمد أبو القيط الأمين العام لجامعة الدول العربية أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يشرفني أن أنقل إليكم تحيات حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى ملك مملكة البحرين المعظمة وتمنيات جلالته حفظ الله بنجاح القمة معبرا عن عزازه بالمشاركة ممثلا لجلالته في أعمال هذه القمة التي تمثل منعطفا في مسيرة العمل العربي المشترك وسبيلا لإعادة التضامن تحقيقا لآمال 
وتطلعات دولنا العربية وشعوبها الشقيقة ويشرفني يا فخامة الرئيس أن ألقي الكلمة الموجهة من حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة المعظم لهذه القمة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسرنا أن نتقدم لأخينا فخامة الرئيس عبد المجيد تبون رئيس الجمهورية الجزائرية الديمقراطية الشعبية الشقيقة بخالص التهنئة على تسلمه رئاسة القمة العربية في دورتها الاعتيادية الحادية والثلاثين متمنين لفخامته كل التوفيق في قيادة مسيرة العمل العربي المشترك في الفترة المقبلة لما يعزز مصالحنا المشتركة ويخدم قضايانا العربية العادلة كما نعرب عن أخص التهاني للجمهورية الجزائرية الديمقراطية الشعبية وشعبها الشقيق بمناسبة حلول ذكرى اليوم الوطني مقدرين لفخامة الرئيس عبد المجيد تبون وحكومته الموقرة الدعوة لانعقاد هذه القمة واستضافة أعمالها ولما بذله من جهود وما قام به من اتصالات لضمان انعقادها نعبر عن الشكر للجمهورية التونسية الشقيقة بقالة فخامة الرئيس غيس حي على إسهاماتها الطيبة في تعزيز العمل العربي المشترك وإدارتها الحكيمة للقمة الثلاثين قمة العزم والتضامن والشكر والتقدير موصول لمعالي أحمد بن القيض أمين العام جامعة الدول العربية وجهاز الأمانة العامة للجامعة لجهودهم في الإعداد والتحضير للقمة والعمل على نجاح أعمالها في مجالاتها المختلفة أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة والسمو يأتي اجتماع اليوم تأكيدا على إدراكنا التام بما يحيط بدولنا وشعوبنا من مخاطر وتحديات تهدد أمننا القومي وتعطل عملنا المشترك تستوجب سرعة العمل للوصول بالتنسيق والتعاون العربي العربي الثنائي والجماعي لأعلى مستوياته وذلك في ظل الاتفاقيات والمعاهدات التي تؤطرها جامعة العربية وميثاقها لمواجهة التحديات المشتركة والأزمات والظروف التي تحاصر وطننا العربي الكبير والصراعات السياسية والعسكرية التي تعاني منها بعض دولنا العربية وما تشهده, وما تشهده من تدخلات خارجية في شؤون الداخلية كما أن من مشكلة الكذا والطاقة والمياه وانتشار الأوبئة والأمن السبرياني من التحديات التي تؤدي الأمن الوطني القومي في وطننا العربي كل ذلك يفرض علينا جميعا ضرورة توحيد الصف والتضامن أصحاب الجالة وفخامة والسمو إن حل القضية الفلسطينية من أهم المطالب والأهداف التي تعمل من أجلها مملكة البحرين باعتبارها القضية المركزية التي لن يتحقق السلام الشامل والعادل في المنطقة ولن نضمن أمنها واستقرارها ونموها إلا بحل هذه القضية العادلة بقيام الدولة الفلسطينية المستقلة وعاصمة القدس الشرقية على أساس مبدأ حل الدولتين ومبادرة السلام العربية وقرارات الشرعية الدولية ذات الصلة وفي هذا السياق فإنه من الواجب الإشادة بجهود الجمهورية الجزائرية الديمقراطية الشعبية الشقيقة لاستضافتها ورعايتها لاجتماع الفصائل الفلسطينية الذي أسفر عن وثيقة أعلان الجزائر آملين أن يحقق هذا الإنجاز وحدة الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق في نضاله العادل على الأصعدة كافة لنيل حقوقه المشروعة وفيما يخص الأزمات الأخرى فإن عدم الالتزام بأسس مبادئ حسن الجوار واحترام سيادة الدول والإصرار والتمادي في التدخل في الشؤون الداخلية للدول العربية فإن ذلك من التحديات التي ينبغي التنسيق والعمل على حلها من خلال الحوار الوطني ما بين الأطراف ذات العلاقة على أساس مبدأ حسن الجوار وسيادة الدول واستقرارها وسلامتها الإقليمية وفي الإطار ذاته 
تجدد مملكة البحرين دعمها لدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة الشقيقة في السيادة على الجزر الإماراتية الثلاث طنب الكبرى وطنب الصغرى وأموسى وإدانتها لاستمرار إيران في احتلالها لهذه الجزر وعلى ضرورة استجابتها لمساعي دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة لحل هذه القضية عن طريق المفاوضات المباشرة أو اللجوء إلى محكمة العدل الدولية كما تثمن مملكة البحرين الجهود المخلصة التي تقوم بها المملكة العربية السعودية الشقيقة ودولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة من أجل إعادة الأمن والاستقرار والتنمية في الجمهورية اليمنية وتعرب المملكة عن دعمها الكامل لمجلس القيادة الرئاسي ومساندتها لجهود الأمم المتحدة من أجل التوصل إلى حل سياسي للأزمة اليمنية وفق المرجعيات الدولية المعتمدة بما يحقق تطلعات الشعب اليمني الشقيق في الأمن والسلم والازدهار أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة والسمو تشاطر مملكة البحرين دول المنطقة والمجتمع الدولي القلق أزاء تصاعد الصراع آت الإقليمية والدولية في ظل التهديد باستخدام الأسلحة النووية وتجدد موقفها أزاء هذا الخطر وامتلاك هذه الأسلحة ودعوتها المجتمع الدولي لإخلاء المنطقة من ومن غيرها من الأسلحة الدمار الشامل وتدعو إلى احترام سيادة الدول والامتناع عن استخدام القوة أو التهديد بها كما تدعو إلى وقف أعمال قرصنة البحرية وحماية الملاحة الدولية وتأمين امدادات النفط وسبل التجارة العالمية وصيانة المصالح المشتركة للدول والشعوب التزاما بالمواثيق والقوانين والمعاهدات الدولية ومن القضايا المصيرية التي باتت أكثر ارتباطا بأمننا القومي ومن أهم متطلبات نجاح واستدامة مسارنا التنموي تحقيق الأمن الغذائي العربي والاكتفاء الذاتي وذلك بالاستثمار الأمثل لمواردنا الطبيعية ومصادرنا الذاتية وتنمية قدراتنا وصولا للتكامل بين الدول العربية التي تمتلك من الإمكانيات ما يؤهلها لبلوغ هذا الهدف ويمكنها من التكيف مع التغيرات البيئية والمناخية التي طرت على العالم وما يشهده من نزاعات وتغيرات اقتصادية وسياسية واستراتيجية ويرتبط الأمن المائي ارتباطا وثيقا بالأمن الغذائي مما يجعل من قضية المياه في الوطن العربي قضية استراتيجية تستجب تكثيف الجهود بشأنها وفي هذا السياق نجدد مساهمة مملكة البحرين الحقوق التاريخية لجمهورية مصر العربية وجمهورية السودان الشقيقين في مياه نهر النيل وضرورة التوصل إلى اتفاق ملزم بشأن ملء وتشغيل سد النهضة الأثيوبي ويحفظ حقوق جميع الأطراف مؤكدين أيضا على أهمية التعاون المشترك في حماية البيئة والحد من تغيرات المناخ في ضوء تأييدنا لمبادرتي السعودية الخضراء والشرق الأوسط الأخضر متمنين لنجاح جمهورية مصر العربية الشقيقة في استضافة ورئاسة الدورة السابعة والعشرين لمؤتر أطراف اتفاقيات المتحدة الإطارية لتغيير المناخ كوب 27 ولدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة الشقيقة في استضافة الدورة الثامنة والعشرين لمؤتمر كوب 28 العام المقبل أصحاب الجلالة والفخامة والسمو أن جدول الأعمال قمة يتضمن البنود القضايا التي تشمل مختلف قضايا العمل العربي المشترك في شتى مجالاته ونتطلع بكل تفاؤل أن تكون هذه القمة قمة إنجاز على مختلف الأصعدة وذلك بالخروج بقرارات تسهم في تعزيز مسارات عملنا الجماعي ونتائج تلبي تطلعات دولنا وشعوبها العربية جميعا وأن تكون قمة التنسيق والتعاون والتكامل وذلك من خلال تعزيز دور جامعة الدول العربية وتمكينها من أداء دورها القومي في تعميق التعاون العربي وتدعيم الروابط بين الدول العربية ومواجهة التحديات الكبرى التي تهددها 
اعتماد التحرك والنهج الجماعي ازاء القضايا والازمات الاقليميه والدوليه والتعامل مع مختلف التحديات والمخاطر التي تواجه الدول العربيه في ظل ما يجمعنا من اواصر ووحده المصير. التمسك والتوافق على دور عربي يساعد في التوصل لتسويه الازمات المنطقه وتقوم على الحوار الوطني والحل السياسي واحترام خصوصيات الدول والمجتمعات وعدم السماح بالتدخل الخارجي باعتبار ذلك السبيل الامثل لحل الصراعات واحتواء الخلاف وانهاء معاناه الشعوب. تعميق الشراكه الدوليه والحوارات الاستراتيجيه مع المجموعات والمنظمات الاقليميه والدوليه والبناء على ما تحقق من مكتسبات في الحوارات العربيه والافريقيه والامريكيه الجنوبيه ونجاح قمه جدا الامن والتنميه معربين عن ترحيب مملكه البحرين باستضافه مملكة العربيه السعوديه الشقيقه للقمه العربيه الصينيه في ديسمبر المقبل. تنميه التجاره فيما بين الدول العربيه لتحقيق التكامل الاقتصادي العربي وتعزيز مكانتها بين دول العالم. العمل على بلوره استراتيجيه متكامله للامن الغذائي العربي لما تمثله هذه القضيه من اهميه متقدمه في أجندة حاضر ومستقبل العمل العربي التعاون في قطاعة التربية والتعليم والبحث العلمي في ضوء وثيقة التعليم في العالم العربي التي تم إطلاقها في مملكة البحرين خلال هذا العام وفي الختام نجدد شكرنا وتقديرنا إلى فخامة الرئيس عبد المجيد تبون والحكومة والشعب الجزائري الشقيق سائلين المولى عز وجل أن يوفقنا جميعا لما فيه خير وصالح أمتنا العربية وضمان أمنها وتقدمها وازدهارها في كافة المجالات والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Representing His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Special Representative, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, yesterday participated in the opening ceremony of the Arab Summit in its 31st regular session, which is held in Algeria. At the opening ceremony, the President of Tunisia and President of the 30th session of the Arab Summit, Qais Saeed, has delivered a speech in which he handed over the presidency of the current session to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Tabun, who delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Algeria would do what would do to unite and achieve the aspirations of the Arab people. Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghait also delivered a speech in which he focused on a number of issues related to Arab security and facing challenges that hinder solidarity and joint Arab action. Speeches were also delivered by the President of Azerbaijan, Chairman of the current session of the Non-Aligned Movement, Ilham Haidaruglu Aliyev. The Senegalese President and current President of the African Union, Makai Sal, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faqi, and uh, the President or the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Hussein Ibrahim Taham. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak attended the dinner banquet hosted by the Algerian President for the heads of delegations participating in the summit.
Commander in Chief of the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa chaired the meeting of the Military Pension Supreme Council in the presence of National Security Advisor Commander of the Royal Guard His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and Head of the National Intelligence Service Lieutenant General Adil bin Khalifa Al Fadl, Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi, Chief of National Security, Sheikh Ahmed bin Abdulaziz al Khalifa, and Director of Staff of the National Guard, Lieutenant General Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Saud al Khalifa. The Council discussed its general policy for the achievements and management of the Military Retirement Fund in terms of technical and administrative regulations and systems. It also discussed investment plans related to the management and investment of the Military Retirement Fund, in addition to examining the general policy of the Military Retirement Fund for the future. The BDF Commander in Chief commended the efforts made by all members of the Supreme Council for the Military Pension Fund and urged the need to concert effort, joint work and the continuation of putting ideas and visions in this field which would ensure the continuity and development of the Military Pension Fund and to ensure the funds of the Military Pensions Fund to achieve more benefits for retirees. Also present at the meeting were Assistant Chief of Staff for Manpower, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Chief of Military Judiciary, President of the Military Court of Cassation, Major General Dr. Yusuf Rashid Flafel, Director General of the Military Retirement Fund, Brigadier Adil Isa Al Zayani, and a number of senior Bahrain Defense Force officers. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and an implementation of His Royal Highness's directives to offer the investment opportunities for public sector partnerships with the private sector in all sectors, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the partnership with the private sector event in the presence of a number of ministers and more than 200 high-ranking officials from the public and private sectors. The Deputy Prime Minister expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister for delegating to him to attend this event which came as a result of His Royal Highness's visit to BCCI. He said that the launch of the event embodies the bridges between public and private sectors for cooperation and joint action to achieve the goals of the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King and a translation of the support and interest that this partnership received from the government headed by His Royal Highness. Sheikh Khalid noted the objectives of this event which aim to highlight the importance of the partnership of the two sectors in the development projects of the kingdom and investment opportunities in them and to announce the most prominent financial and economic indicators and to review the stimulating tools for partnership with the private sector and the projects that ministries and government agencies work on, which would include the participation of the private sector in development and investment. He added that Bahrain is proud of a successful, effective and real partnership between the public and private sector for the benefit of the Bahraini citizen. The Deputy Prime Minister also referred to the partnership in the housing sector, which is a unique and pioneering model which contributes to the government fulfilling the obligations of its current program by providing thousands of housing units for citizens implemented by the private sector. He stressed that the partnership between the public and private sectors is a reality embodied by many evidences of the projects implemented in the housing, energy, sports, sanitation, transportation, health, construction and building sectors and many others. The Deputy Prime Minister announced that the effectiveness of this partnership will reveal new aspects of partnership between the public and private sectors in vital and important sectors such as trade, tourism and labor market regulation. For his party Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa affirmed that Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness continues to make achievements within the economic recovery plan, pointing out that strengthening the partnership with the private sector as a major drive of economic growth contributed to creating many promising opportunities for the people of the country, commending the efforts of Team Bahrain in this regard. He noted the success achieved in terms of the economic recovery plan, indicating that a number of economic sectors have achieved growth. He also pointed out that development is a continuous process and activating the partnership with the private sector is a priority when implementing projects and initiatives.
The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Housing Financing Exhibition in the presence of ministers and officials organized by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning in cooperation with the Housing Bank. The, ministry, the Deputy Premier affirmed that the new approach in the social housing sector in Bahrain proved its success through prioritizing the partnership with the private sector in housing plans and programs according to the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty the King. He added that the government led by His Royal Highness as the Crown Prince and Prime Minister will continue to provide flexible initiatives to enable citizens to receive instant housing services. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah noted that the new housing financing is characterized by the diversity of its purposes and it enabled citizens to choose the type of financing that suits their needs. He highlighted the success of the Mazaya program in providing over 11,000 housing services over the past year. For her part, the Minister of Housing, Amna Rmehi, expressed her thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Premier for the support the Ministry receives from the Ministerial Committee for development and infrastructure projects under his chairmanship. She affirmed that the exhibition embodies the ministry's vision to unite all the branches of the new financing system to enable citizens to choose the suitable financing offers. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, chaired the Council's meeting. And Naimi praised the support of His Majesty the King for the education process and the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister that contributed in great achievements at the national, regional and international levels. The Minister of Education affirmed that since the issuance of Law 3 of the year 2005 regarding higher education, competent authorities have taken many measures based on the decisions and regulations that have been prepared with the aim of providing or for proving uh, improving educational outcomes. During the meeting, Higher Education Council Secretary General and Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa bin Ta'id al-Khalifa gave a presentation on the memoranda submitted by the General Secretariat after they had been studied by the advisory committee emanated from the Council. The Council has taken the following decisions. A guide to academic cooperation agreements, an initial approval for the establishment of three faculties at the European University, reviewing the memorandum of the General Secretary and cooperation between Abdullah bin Khalid College of Islamic Studies and the Muhammad bin Zayed University for Human Sciences. The Council also discussed a number of memos from the General Secretariat regarding requests from higher education institutions to introduce academic programs and host other programs in addition to a number of requests from higher education institutions to approve memoranda and cooperation agreements with external institutions. The Council also approved the annual budget and audited final accounts of a number of higher education institutions. An implementation of the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, to cancel the flexible work permit and register all expatriate workers in partnership with the private sector. The Minister of Labour and LMRA Chairman Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan issued Edict 1 of the year 2022 regarding assigning some of the tasks of the LMRA to the Manpower Registration Centres. The Labour Minister also stressed the, that the edict is part of the measures taken by LMRA to implement the directives in partnership with the private sector intensive inspection campaigns, tightening dealing with the violators linked professional work licenses, standards and qualifications, provide the appropriate environment for workers that takes into account their rights and the effectiveness of their role in economic development. Bahrain Mumtalakat Holding Company, Mumtalakat, the sovereign wealth fund of Bahrain, announced its cooperation with Mubadala Health, the integrated health network of Mubadala Investment Company, Mubadala, to explore a potential joint venture to set up a long-term care and post-acute rehabilitation fa facility in Bahrain. The proposed facility will bring Mubadala Health's renowned experts in the field of post-acute health services to Bahrain to provide the highest quality of treatment to the current underserved patients requiring long-term care. The offer 
offering of these services within a specialized facility will also alleviate the pressure on the healthcare system by freeing up bed capacity in acute hospitals across the kingdom. The chief executive officer of Umtarakat, Khaled Armehi, has said that the collaboration will offer promising prospects consistent with the principles and values of investment common between the two sides. He added that Mumtarakat is committed to investing in Bahrain and supporting the economic growth in the kingdom by focusing on key economic sectors, including healthcare. Chief Executive Officer of Mubadala Health, Hassan Al Nuez, said that the collaboration will bring Mubadala Health closer in achieving its vision of transforming the regional healthcare landscape. The chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Abdullah Nas, affirmed that the Bahrain International Air Show, would, which will be held during the next few days, has become one of the major events held in Bahrain, given the global interest and the attraction of major international companies operating in the aviation industry. Nas indicated that the air show will provide more opportunity to highlight Bahrain as a distinguished center for attracting investment, making major deals promoting the aviation industry, travel, tourism, and global events. He noted that the air show has the ability to develop the economy and revitalize the economic movement in all its sectors in the kingdom, stressing the importance of investing in such international events and exhibitions which undoubtedly contribute to supporting the tourism industry and enhancing Bahrain's status as a place with diverse tourism potential.